This is the legendary trolling of Anthony Jeselnik. He won't be fully appreciated until he's dead. <laughs> So I, I always looked up to him, always, always loved him, which is why meeting him and getting to work with him was such a huge disappointment. If you're a big fan of stand-up comedy, you're probably well aware of the comedian Anthony Jeselnik, who is well known for his incredibly dark one-liners and his arrogant, over-the-top attitude on stage. Anthony is a very great comedian, but there was a time in his career when he was outsmarted by one of his heroes, comedian Norm Macdonald, while they were working together. As a fan of both of these comedians, this story is an incredibly humorous one, and if you're unaware of the story about the time Norm and Anthony worked together on Last Comic Standing, then you've come to the right place. I will be detailing the story between these two comedians and how it was a legendary moment when Anthony Jeselnik was trolled by a comedian who he genuinely admired. To get a crystal clear understanding of what happened between these two, we need to start off by establishing the full timeline of events. In early 2015, Anthony Jeselnik was called and asked by his manager if he wanted to replace comedian J.B. Smoove as the host of the reality television talent competition show on NBC titled Last Comic Standing, to which Anthony Jeselnik replied, Why the fuck would would I want to do that? That show sucks. Anthony originally wanted nothing to do with the offer, but then he was informed that the judges would be Keenan Ivory Wayans, Roseanne Barr, and Norm Macdonald. Norm Macdonald is one of Anthony's biggest comedic influences, and upon realizing he'd have the opportunity to work with Norm, he would accept the offer to host Last Comic Standing on the spot. Upon accepting the offer, the season of Last Comic Standing would air on July 22nd, 2015, and during the shooting of the show is when all the action would take place. Despite Anthony's eagerness to work with his hero and former doghouse owner, Norm Macdonald, he cited that the first few days of filming were incredibly rocky and difficult, and that he and Norm did not get along at all. They asked me to do it, and I thought, oh, that sounds awful. And they're like, no, it's you and Norm MacDonald. And I was like, oh, I'd love to work with Norm MacDonald, thinking that it would be fun to work with Norm MacDonald. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we just hated each other <laughs> for like eight days. We would just like yell at each other. We, we, we would like yell at each other. We'd have to like take breaks to calm down. <laughs> And it's like hard when you're like, when you're like upsetting one of your idols, you're just like, shit. He also expressed disappointment in the fact that NBC decided to cut out all of the fights that him and Norm got in because even though it was uncomfortable for him, he believed that it was great television and that people would really enjoy it. And then we like, we would look, we'd talk after each episode and be like, well, at least it's going to be great television. And then they cut all that shit out. <laughs> like, oh, this interesting stuff. No, we got to get rid of that to watch these open micers go head to head. <laughs> According to Anthony Jeselnik, NBC also messed up in the editing room and did not do Norm justice at all because apparently he had some very blunt and brutal moments with some of the contestants where he absolutely trashed them as comedians. And Norm was like borderline a monster to people. Like he would say things that would kill me, that I would be like on the floor dying laughing. Like I would have to take time. One of my favorites was he told this one girl, he told this one girl, uh, he said, uh, he goes, I think that you are incapable of writing a joke. And she goes, oh, well, I'll work on that. She's trying to be nice. She's like, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll work on that. And he goes, no, no, don't work on it. I said you are incapable. And <laughs> that was the most like crushing thing he could have said to someone. So this one lady came up on stage to do comedy and Norm didn't see any way that this lady could do comedy. I'm not going to guide any lady through comedy. That would take me, uh, first of all, I'd have to figure out how a lady could do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> What a jip that turned out to be. You know it's not a jip? Liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you're finding value in the content you're watching. I appreciate you guys watching the video. So Norm was incredibly vicious towards some of the contestants. I actually recall one clip where this one comedian did some material making fun of the Bible and Norm basically called him a hack while the other two judges called him brave. Check this out. He was like, men do not live on bread alone. Matthews 4-4. Four, four. And it's like, everybody's a little bit magic. Harry Potter, chapter 7. <laughs> I disagree. I don't think the Bible joke is uh, brave at all. I, uh, I think if you're going to take on an entire religion, you should maybe know what you're talking about. So Norm was very direct to the contestants when he didn't like them. I mean, he could not have been more leashed. Anthony would then proceed to talk about why him and Norm fought so much. He describes it as two alpha males trying to show who is the funniest comedian, which to me just sounds like Anthony being a deeply closeted gay man. What are you fighting about? 
Just like uh, who's going to be the funny one? It's just two alpha males. Anthony's not lying, though, because there was a couple clips of him and Norm exchanging wits, and it's pretty funny. There's one clip in particular I will show because personally, it made me laugh. When you were at the ATM machine, you were no longer a black guy. You were <laughs> a human being. That was great. Almost racist, but then you got it right under the bar, Norm. That's why I love you. This clip makes me sad because if that was left in the final cut by NBC, then there must be some absolutely horrendous but hilarious moments between Anthony and Norm that were left on the cutting room floor. However, Anthony proceeds to talk about how after the first few days of working together, he and Norm started to get along better, and unsurprisingly, the two of them would become a unique and unstoppable comedic force together, and they would make for some of the funniest moments on the show. But none of it made it to the final cut. Then after the taping of Last Comic Standing, Anthony details an exchange between him and Norm when they were backstage getting ready to record press episodes with Larry King on his show. While backstage, they were brainstorming ways to promote the show because apparently Norm had no idea how he was going to do it. Then Anthony suggests that they go on the radio in interviews, and when asked about each other, they would just publicly insult each other and talk shit to promote the show. When Norm heard this, he agreed to it immediately and said he thought it was a great idea. And so we're backstage at Larry King, and I, he's like, I don't know how to promote this thing. I don't know what, I'm, what, what, what to talk about. So we want to talk about these comics, and I go, no, let's do this. Let's say that we had this horrible rivalry, and that we hate each other, and just talk trash about like things we would do to each other backstage, and like all these how much we hate each other. He goes, that's great, let's do that, it's, that's really funny. And I'm like, all right, great. There was one interview where Anthony was asked about it, and he stuck to the plan for every single interview he did. Here's one that comes to mind. You know, like, not every joke has to hit. You don't want to be a crowd pleaser. You want to be a great comedian. And Norm seemed to always be going that way. So I, I always looked up to him, always, always loved him. Which is why meeting him and getting to work with him was such a huge disappointment. Norm MacDonald, who was amazing. He'll be here in a little while. Um, he wasn't that great, to be honest. Like, I know he's probably <laughs> listening to this a little bit, but man, between you and me, it was, it was more, it's more my show. It wasn't a bit. It was yeah. like he was pontificating about things. And female comics especially mm. got, it, got it rough. Yeah. And, uh, and it didn't make, he would love someone and hate someone else. It didn't yeah. make, uh, there was no rhyme or reason. Then Anthony talks about how when backstage, he was the first person to record with Larry King. And when Anthony was asked about working with Norm, he said, quote, Larry, Norm MacDonald is a piece of shit, end quote. According to Anthony, he could hear Norm laughing backstage. Then when he went backstage, Norm was still laughing about what he had said. Then when Norm goes on Larry King, Anthony's backstage listening, and then Larry asks him about Anthony Jeselnik. Then Norm proceeds to say, quote, Larry, Anthony Jeselnik is one of the greats, end quote. Absolutely hilarious. Additionally, Anthony would continue to do more and more press while keeping up with this plan of trashing Norm every time to promote the show, and Norm would do the exact opposite. Anthony actually talks about how he believed that Norm had just completely forgotten about the conversation they had, but in this interview it would appear that Anthony did not realize that he had just been played like a fiddle by Norm MacDonald. So I go around for weeks. And I'm just throwing Norm under the bus, talking about how much I hated him and what an awful person he is. And Norm has completely forgotten that we've made this deal. <laughs> Norm is just talking about how nice I am and how funny I am everywhere we go. And he still hasn't brought it up to me, but I can't, I can't think he's happy. Now, considering the fact that Norm is now taking a dirt nap, there's no real way for us to 100% confirm if Norm forgot or if he just didn't follow through with the plan, knowing full and well that Anthony trashing him would make him look like a world-class douche, especially if Norm isn't being rude as well. However, if I was a betting man like Artie Lang, I'd put money on the fact that Norm absolutely knew this would make Jesselnik look like an ass, so that's why he did it. In fact, that's what a lot of the Norm fanbase has also agreed on, so I think it's pretty safe to say that's what happened. It's a funny story, and in fact, it's one of my favorite stories because it involves two comedians I really, really enjoy. As much as I like Jesselnik, he had to take this one on the chin because he was trolled by one of the masters of trolling. Furthermore, some of the details of the story I picked up from seeing Anthony Jesselnik live very recently redeemed details the interaction between him and Norm and how Norm was the only celebrity he was ever really excited to meet. And if Anthony releases a new special sometime soon, you will all get to hear this story from his perspective for yourself. I like Anthony, I love Norm, but I just thought this story was too good to not share on the channel, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. All in all, this was the legendary trolling of Anthony Jeselnik. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video to the end. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to support the channel by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on post notifications down below, because that's a free way to help the channel out, and it also helps the community grow brick by brick. I want the YouTube family to hit 100,000 subscribers this year, so please help me out with that by subscribing to the channel. If you want 
want to support the channel further, you can check out the Patreon page down below, where you can get some exclusive benefits like getting to see videos early, getting to see exclusive content like a podcast I recently recorded and my set at the Tampa Improv. You also get to play a direct hand in the direction my channel takes, and you get shoutouts every single video. Shout out to Jason Murray, Crossblocker, Ethan, Thomas Gill, and Karsten, the newest patron, for supporting me on Patreon. Anyway, hope you guys love the video. Make sure you take care of yourselves, your friends, your family, and your loved ones. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.